Today we got our recon. So we got a recone here. Going to go over the steps on how to do this. I got the recone from my Rockford Fosgate HX2 um, from the speaker exchange, except they had uh, mislabeled, and this is not the correct recone. And apparently, I guess they don't make the recone for this speaker. This is the recone for the Rockford Punt um, HE2, not the HX, the HE. Um, so that's kind of not right but it does take 400 watts versus 500 so I'll just underpower these a little bit until I can get the um, upgraded parts I'm gonna go ahead and probably recone these with a uh, thousand watt coils but this is rated 400 I'm, I'm sure it'll handle 500 no problem um, because Rockford usually underrated their things and I was able to push 600 on these a little bit but I uh, guess I'll just put it back down to 5 um, and the other difference is this is a little bit taller of a uh, former, but the coil and everything is exactly the same, the diameter and the height. Um, so mechanically this should work exactly the same, just it won't be able to take as much power most likely. And I did have to modify the spider slightly and cut it down just a bit so it will fit into this landing. As so, But we'll go ahead anyways and go over how to do this. So that's what we're working on today. This is, um, the part one of this was how to clean the basket, and uh, you can go check that out. This will be the part two, kind of um, assembling the recone and getting things aligned, and then uh, either in this part or uh, part three, I'll be uh, dropping it in and getting it set up in the woofer, and then we'll test it and make sure it works. So uh, go ahead. Oh, and we're going to use the original dust cap. And here's also some adhesive I picked up off of eBay, and uh, we're going to go from there and start. So we're going to take the original um, cone and soft part assembly, and we want to measure the distance in between the top of the coil and the spider, so we can get the spider placed correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I think it was 18 millimeters, I'm going to double check. And then when I go to the new coil, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark in various spots around uh, 18 millimeters let's just say I think that's what it was and then we're gonna try to align the spider up to that and we can go ahead and glue it on at that point so I'm gonna go through all that and then I'll show you guys what it looks like so I got the spider lined up where we want it on the voice coil so we're gonna go ahead and start gluing here in a minute but the idea is trying to get that spider perpendicular to the voice coil so what I did was I measured down and all the way around and made marks and I've lined it up to those marks. It doesn't look like it's perpendicular, but that's because the spider on the outside, it warps. But on the inside, that's where you're looking at. That's what you're looking for, is trying to get that even on that side and that side, and then you spin it around and just keep looking. That side, that side. So you want to make sure those gaps are the same all the way around. And it helps to spin it, you know, and watch it. You know, there's a little bit of deviation, but you get the point. So while I work the glue, I'm going to just adjust the spider as necessary, and then hopefully it holds. So I put a very small bead of the uh, two-part epoxy all the way around. Very carefully slid it all in without moving any of the adhesive while it was still curing. And I put all my shims in, and it's sitting where right where it's supposed to be into the basket just hanging out. So I'm just going to let that sit up for about 20 minutes and then uh, we can go from there. So while we wait on the, the epoxy for the spider, I'm going to start prepping the cone for terminal leads. As you can see I popped a little hole through there and we're going to do the next few to run these little tensile wires as you can see here so the idea is <coughs> um, 
you want to try to line your cone up. If it has these little guys, these little divots, that's the screws where they go through. So you want to line that up. And you can see the front, or you can see really where these terminals are, there's a screw above it. So on the speaker, what you do is place a screw on the front or the top of the speaker, let's say. And then you want to go straight down to the voice coil, find the middle spot, work up about a three quarters to one inch, and then go to the left about the same amount, poke your hole. And then for the other one you do the same thing, but you're going to go right. And then on the bottom, it's a mirror image. And then I'll show you the old one. As you can see, the they were soldered right there, near the top of the speaker. So we're gonna go go ahead and do that. So um, pretty much uh, anything works as long as it's sharp enough to get through the material. And I have two sizes these little pokers. Um, start out small and I'll go to the bigger one. But basically, you're just gonna find where you're gonna do it. I'm gonna go right about there. It helps if you're holding the speaker out in the air, but you just start poking through it. And put the camera over here somewhere. Find my hole again. You just twist it through there, start Try not to rip it, you just want to put a nice hole in it. Alright, then you can go to the next size. Make that hole a little bit bigger. If you don't have anything, uh, that's just a better way to do it. Make sure the hole's nice. Alright, so there's the two holes for the wires. So that one's a little up, but um, you'll never see it under the dust cap. And then when you're ready, and we've gotten to the point where we're ready to run leads, you just run them through there. Leave enough slack on both ends to uh, solder here to the voice coil, imaginary voice coil. And then you want to have enough slack when you run through the basket to your terminal from the voice coil to the terminal. And uh, this kit did, did come with some. I bought some extra just in case it didn't, but it, it did. They didn't state that it did, but um, just letting you guys know, if you buy from their speaker exchange, uh, they have a lot of different stuff. But basically, they, they'll include shims and tensile lead, and I, did, I didn't really notice, um, know that. But they do not include epoxies, and I ended up getting this stuff off eBay, like I mentioned earlier. Um, the only problem with the speaker exchange is this was the wrong kit. But I've modded it, and it's going to work. I'm going to have to just underpower the speaker a little bit, which isn't a big deal because they don't overpower them often. But uh, everything's pretty much the same. This is for an HE model, and this is the HX model. Slightly different, but only 100 watt RMS difference on their rated power. And everything's pretty much the same on it, so not a big deal. I'm just going to reuse the old dust cap. Well, while we're here prepping, um, while we're waiting for the epoxy, we can go over the dust cap. These um, these type of dust caps, they're like a polypropylene, uh, like a plastic, and they're really slick. And it helps if you go to sand down this edge around here so the epoxy has something better to adhere to. That's not necessarily necessary, but it just, it just, uh, it's peace of mind for a stronger bond. But does that, does that look good? Brand new speaker, basically. Can't wait to see it done. It's been a long time. I haven't had a, had my system together. Um, but yeah. So go ahead and make sure you're sending the back side of that um, for a good adhesion. And then, again, with these tensile leads, just leave enough, enough slack to uh, reach everywhere you need to get. So it's raining out here, so I uh, apologize if you can't hear very well. But uh, we're ready for the next step is uh, adhering this cone into the voice coil assembly and note none of this has been attached to the basket yet I'm gonna do a uh, one piece and then do a drop in basically I think it's easier um, it's just my style of doing this 
you can adapt it to however you think is easiest. But uh, so the next step is making sure we got everything lined up with our shims. Looking down here at how the cone is sitting with the spider. This one has a small space in it, so this is why I usually like to uh, do one piece without draw without you know attaching the spider and then doing the cone separately. I like to just have one whole piece because then I'm able to get in here a lot easier and um, add any silicone if it doesn't ooze through um, the top and it should because there's a small little gap that goes around very tiny and if there's not and the cone sits very snug on that you just uh, cut it away with a razor knife just a bit or you can sand it away a little bit but you want a slight space so that the, the epoxy can slide down and that the cone doesn't warp from being too tight on the uh, on the coil. It's starting to look like a speaker now. So the next step is getting our adhesives and start filling this whole void. And uh, so here's my adhesive. Let's see if I can't do two at once. Two things at once. I'm just gonna start over here. But you can start out with a fairly light bead. Let me see if I can get this stuff to come out. May have been, may have clogged it, but uh, I'll check back when when I get this done. So we have our full recone assembled. It's ready to drop in now. Everything lined up pretty good, it looks like. And uh, so when you're getting ready to put all this in, it would be time to clean up the, the gap one last time. And uh, you just basically get a light, and you look in there really good. And just if you see anything, make sure you can get it out. I use Q-tips. And then uh, make sure the Q-tips don't leave any fibers or anything. That's usually a big deal. Uh, and then I just went ahead and used compressed air and compressed air, and that really did the trick. It uh, finished it off, and there's nothing in there, so uh, that's very important. You don't want any debris in there. So uh, when we get ready to do this, what we're gonna do is have our shims readied up, and then we're gonna put a bead of glue all the way around both of the landings. Have our shims ready drop everything in and then uh, start pressing it all down and clamping it and whatever you need to do um, to make sure it sets up perfect 